<laughs> okay, so look right. Tell me this, y'all. Riddle me this. Usually I give clothes or whatever to like hope for domestic violence and, and inspire for whatever. So these pants, the zipper was broke. These are by Baranda. Let me just show you. Okay. Baranda. The zipper was broke. So, you know, I just didn't, you know, I, I don't think I'm going to get him fixed. But the latch things still work. Tell me why my dog went to effing town on these pants. Look, look what he did. Look what he did. Y'all my witness. What the, what? What is this? What? Oh, no, the other leg's like that, too. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, this, all this. What's this? Went to town on these pants. Is he trying to say, don't nobody want them fucking pants? Don't nobody want that shit. Don't nobody want it, nay. Take this shit. Do something else with it. Do something else with it. Nobody wants that shit. Just don't do it. So, excuse me. I don't know what the material. Maybe I could use it for something else or just let him have him if he want to be tearing stuff up for no reason. And look. This is a different pair of pants with kind of a similar pattern, but a different color. And these are U.S. Polo Association pants. Size 7, 8. Handle for a nice long time. And look at this. Look. I did this with my big ass. It had to be last season because when I went to put them on because I was pulling them up by the boot the bootstrap lift yourself up by your bootstraps by the way but the belt loop is what I meant who said do that so I'm not going to wear these but the zipper's not broke and all this stuff could probably be covered up somehow but I'm not going to wear this stuff if there's anyone out there who is like a uh, um, now this one hasn't been tore up by the fuzzy guy. I ain't gonna say no names because you know if I he hear me talking about them. Lisa it ain't behind his back. At least he can hear me. It's like no, nah, but for real, if there's anybody who uses material who wants this kind of stuff, I don't know, a budding aspiring seamstress or artist or. There might be somebody who uses material in their art. I don't know. I'm into denim. I'll make anything out of denim. This would be something, I don't know, I would probably make a hat wrap or something. But if anybody wants these, they're all yours. Corduroy galore. I love small corduroy. I'm not really that big into big corduroy. But whatever. Anyway, this also I wanted to tell y'all about microaggressions. Microaggressions are, they're displayed in numerous ways. They're unspoken aggressions that people have towards. I'm just telling you about mine, and then you can see both sides. Because usually I try to balance them out. Well, I do balance them out. I don't try, I just do. Back in the day when I was younger, maybe like four, five, six, I went to Selma Burke Dance school in East Slip in Pittsburgh. Oh, I love that. because I had my leotard. It had my little tights with the toe and the heel cut out. Don't play with me. It was in the whiz. Uh. So my big brother, he was on the football team and my sister was a cheerleader. Or well, Westinghouse High School. Hey, Westinghouse. So he used to bring Derek, who was a small person, with him to come pick me up from dance class. Why? Did my friends was like, ooh, is that I mean, oh, it was just this big deal. I, I used to be so squaw. I had squabs. Like, why are you don't bring him? So it was like funny to them because you know I'm bugging out. And they got a kick out of it, I guess. But that dude didn't do nothing to me. I don't want to put his name out there because people in Pittsburgh don't know who I'm talking about. Ain't did nothing to me. 
But I was little and I don't want no shenanigans like stuff that ain't this weird. Like, don't. They're like, ooh, is that your boyfriend? You know how kids is. I'm, I don't got squabs because something that doesn't, I'll just say, fit into your concept of what you've known previously or since, you know, get it stands out. So anyway, I probably have a microaggression towards such visual differences as that specifically. And that person did nothing to me. And the people that I see that I, the microaggression is in the, you know, like the attitude, like the disgust because of the experience. I didn't want to go to dance class no more. I don't want to go no more. I'm not going with that bullshit. But you're little, so you don't really know. But yes, I did wear the leotard. I wanted to still wear my leotard. I still loved, you know, modern dance, all the dance, the whiz, all that. Still love it. But no, you're not going to be doing all that. So my microaggression would be probably towards that demographic. They don't have nothing to do with them. They ain't did nothing to me. It's just a guttural reaction to, I don't know if it's the difference or the experience. So anyway, the anatomy of the microaggression is that. But then I had a third grade teacher. I'm going to say her name is Miss Rookie. Hey, Miss Rookie. But my favorite teacher was Miss Steele, my second grade teacher. Seven is magic. What's up, Elmore? However, Miss Rookie, she was, oh, and my science teacher, Mr. Soa, who played Love Potion Number 9 on his guitar. I remember so anyway, Miss Rookie was a smaller individual, and that was my girl, though. So see, so she kind of balanced it out. However, my first instinct or my first thought or my first, you know, reaction is, or I'll avoid them at all costs just so I don't have to be. I'm not watching her shows. I don't want to know how they're doing. I don't want to know. Because one time I was watching them wrestling one time back in the day. Me and one of my homies, and I laughed way too hard. Like, it was way too, like, it was just not right. And I don't want to be like that. So that's my choice. So there are people out there who have microaggressions towards whoever for whatever. I don't want to say anything specific because that's for the individual to determine within themselves. And whenever someone expresses or has a microaggression towards you, and you know it don't have nothing to do with you, then you may be able to see things from their perspective and let them deal with that. Let them handle that. Don't be an outlet for anyone else's shenanigans. Look at your own. See what yours is. It could be a color that reminds you of something. And then it could be a smell. It could be anything sensory, anything. And then all of a sudden... It may make you feel good, but I probably wouldn't call that a microaggression. It would maybe be like a fond memory or something. And if it makes you feel some other kind of way, like, mm, or, mm, or, mm, like those things, that's probably a microaggression. So there you have it. People function with them all day, every day. And some people in certain positions, let's not. Let's just be mindful of such matters as Microaggressions. Work on yours. I'll work on mine. Is it a deal? Pinky swear. It's like, nah, y'all have a good day. I just thought I'd share that with you.